Hare Krishna. Welcome back to the Krishna Daily Way of Cooking. So today I'm going to share with you bread-free ekadashi recipes. Along with this, I'm also going to share with you one dessert which is going to be ekadashi friendly. So let's proceed towards the recipes. So first here I have taken two medium-sized potatoes. I'm going to peel them nicely. After peeling them, I'm going to grate them. So you have to actually have a shredded form of the potatoes, not very finely grating. And I'm going to keep a small skillet on heat the time I'm grating the potatoes. Because these potatoes are going to have starch, so make sure that the pan is already on heat. So I've added here around one and a half tablespoons of oil. You can use ghee or you can use sunflower oil or olive oil. Let it heat a little bit and then add around a teaspoon of cumin seeds, little bit saute it and then add the shredded potatoes. Now this is actually going to be a pan fry pizza. Usually pizzas are made on a pan so I'm going to show you how to make with the base of the potato. So now here I have spread it out. And the heat is on medium and I sprinkle a little bit of salt and I'm going to mix everything again and then again I'm going to evenly spread it out like this that is why the use of small skillet really helps and I'm going to let the base cook for around seven minutes on medium heat so you see how the starch completely combined the potatoes together this is what we want exactly now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some bell peppers so i've used uh, green bell pepper on top of it after this i'm going to add some chopped tomatoes and now i'm going to add some grated cheese so i have used mozzarella cheese this is safe vegetarian cheese now i'm going to add some chili flakes on top of it and cover it with a lid and let it cook on extreme low heat until the cheese melts completely. Now here I have a bigger skillet and in this I am going to roast some peanuts. Just on medium heat spread out a handful of peanuts and roast them. Now we see here that the cheese has melted, the base has been cooked and this pan fry pizza is ready and I'm going to place this on a plate. Now this pizza, you have to see that the base easily can scoop out like this. I'm going to just slide it on the plate. Now on top I'm going to garnish it with some chopped cilantro. You can even use some basil or parsley as per your choice. Now the peanuts here are roasted. I'm going to let this peanuts cool down and then I'm going to peel them and then coarsely ground them. So while the peanuts are cooling down, here I have some boiled potatoes. These are actually between medium to small size potatoes. I've used around 7 to 8 in quantity. I'm going to peel all these potatoes. With these potatoes, we are going to make baked pizza. It will be like a thin uh, crust pizza which will be made from the base of potatoes. So after peeling all these potatoes, I'm going to put it in a kneader and then I'm going to mash them. You can also do it with hand. Just make sure everything is very smoothly blended. So I added here around half tablespoon of salt. And then I just blended them like this. I've also used around two teaspoons of oil. Now don't worry with respect to the stickiness of the potatoes. 
it will be fine what you have to do is just wet your palms with water don't use too much oil just use the water with your hands and then take a parchment paper spread it on the counter and then with your wet hand just bring all this mixture down on the parchment paper now by this time keep the oven on preheating like 400 fahrenheit and take a little bit of water on your palms and start spreading the base like this just make around 14 to 15 inches of the diameter for this pizza spread it out evenly so that the thickness is proper now i'm going to place this in a pizza tray and then bake it for around 35 minutes until the top part of it becomes golden brown so when the top part of it will become golden brown that's when we'll know that the pizza base is also cooked now here i have again kept the small skillet on heat on medium heat and then i'm going to make the sauce here i've added like five blended tomatoes these are wine tomatoes that's why they are so nice and red so make sure that you use nice juicy tomatoes and then in this i have added around one tablespoon of dry basil now you can use fresh basil leaves not a problem then i add around one tablespoon of sugar then half teaspoon of black pepper this is crushed black pepper and then i used a little bit of salt just like a quarter teaspoon of it i'm going to cook this sauce for around five to seven minutes on medium heat until it thickens a little bit and then i'm going to turn off the stove and keep it aside and cool it down now here i'm going to show you preparing the dessert which is the ice cream here i'm using some condensed milk you see the ingredients are simple just milk and sugar so just try to get a condensed milk which has only few ingredients i'm going to open the can now this is a can of the quantity 300 ml and i'm not going to use all the condensed milk i'm just going to use around 250 or 200 ml and here i have some whipping cream if you see the ingredients is only cream so try to get a liquid whipping cream which has only safe ingredients for ekadashi so i'm going to use this this is around two cups of whipping cream and then i'm going to add the condensed milk now i'm going to blend this mixture with a hand blender now there is automatic hand blenders available like this one i'm going to use this one and then blend it don't make the whipping into a complete cream form you don't want too much of a thick cream just blend it into this much consistency where it is a little bit creamy at the same time smooth as well so this is the kind of uh, whipping cream consistency we require so you see it's a little bit watery a little bit smooth this is the perfect texture actually for making ice creams now i'm going to also crush some dry fruits i've used some almonds pistachios and cashews i've used more quantity of almond and pistachios than cashews it will just give this uh, amazing flavor of uh, pistachio to it you can also use saffron strands if you have those i'm going to skip that step in this one just mixing everything nicely now here i have this nice tray i'm going to empty out the entire ice cream mixture the good thing about this consistency is that your ice cream will still remain creamy and also it will not become very uh, crystal like ice ice crystal so that is why this consistency is going to help so after emptying the entire content in this tray i'm going to tap it 
just even it out and I'm going to take a surround wrap and I'm going to place it on top of this ice cream so now see why we do this is so that everything is on level and then there is no ice crystals on top this really helps the ice cream to set well so I'm going to keep it in the freezer and then set it for around four to five hours now the base of the pizza is ready this is exactly how we want it so make sure that the base is cooked it's that's how thin crust it is and I'm going to add the sauce which has cooled down already just evenly spread it now after adding the sauce I'm going to add the chopped tomatoes and bell peppers I have also used some pineapple because Canadian pizza never goes without pineapple and I really like pineapple on the pizzas so I'm going to now garnish it with some cilantro and on top of it I'm going to add cheese now if you do not want to use mozzarella cheese then you can use freshly made paneer just crumble the paneer and then place it on top of it you can also make my homemade sour cream recipe which I've shared on the channel and then place it like as a base and then on top of that you can add the paneer now I'm going to bake this pizza for around five to seven minutes until the cheese melts just make sure that the top part of it actually becomes uh, nicely golden brown now this is here the peanuts which I have blended and here our pizza is ready I'm letting it cool down now and then I'm now going to show you the peanuts which I coarsely blended I'm going to add three to four chilies in it this is for the next recipe which is the tapioca parathas we're gonna make so you just need like a little bit coarse blend of stuff this is how you need it now in this bowl I have added the mixture now I have here two medium sized parboiled potatoes these are 70% boiled and I'm going to grate them both the potatoes nicely grate them these are used nicely for uh, binding so after using these two potatoes I'm going to use a third potato which is not boiled this raw potato peel it and then grate it the reason why I'm grating this parboiled potato is because it will mix with the other ingredients evenly this raw potato is going to give a crunch to the parathas which we are making for the tapioca now I'm going to add around two tablespoons of full fat yogurt and then adding around a tablespoon of salt now here you see I have soaked around a cup of tapioca overnight now I'm going to crush a little bit of cumin seeds this is like around one teaspoon of cumin seed I crush it in between my palms I'm going to mix everything well make sure everything is mixed properly with this tapioca granules now add some chopped cilantro to it I've used around half cup of chopped cilantro mixed everything well if you find the mixture to be too sticky to your hands then you can just wet the palm and then mix it again now after mixing it nicely I'm going to keep this mixture aside and then I'm going to place a parchment paper on the counter and then add this mixture by this time my pan is also heating on medium that's a small skillet which I used before so I'm going to just wet my palms a little bit and then dab it in this manner make a nice medium thickness paratha shape
just even out the thickness. Now take it on your hand like this and then place it on the pan. Now you have to cook this between low to medium heat. Do not cook it on fast like a very high heat otherwise it will burn and then also the tapioca and the potato will not get cooked nicely. So just drizzle a little bit of oil. You can use olive oil, you can use ghee, you can use sunflower oil, not a problem. So just brush it nicely. It takes around 5 to 7 minutes to cook the bottom part of this paratha. Just drizzle a little bit of oil, you do not want the paratha to be too oily. And then once that bottom is cooked, then you flip it to the other side. And then cook it the similar manner. Let me show you the other one. Just make sure you use a parchment paper or a wax paper and then also dab your hands with some water. That will make things easy. This recipe looks so simple and the flavor of this paratha is extremely good. So if you do not want it too spicy, the amount of chilies which I have used, you can just reduce it. Usually what happens, the potatoes are used three and then the tapioca, they all have a little bit bland flavor. So adding chilies is not going to make it too spicy. So now my pizza has a little bit cooled down and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to show you how thin crust the entire pizza base has turned out to be. So here is the one slice. I'm going to cut it properly. This is how wonderful our pizza looks like. Look at the crust, how thin crust it is. So without any kind of ekadashi flour or anything, you can just make this nice pizza. So now here the paratha is also ready. I'm going to remove it and then I'm going to put it on the offering plate. So this is our bread free recipes which are ready. I'm going to place a tulsi leaf and offer it at the lotus feet of Shri Krishna. And here now my ice cream is done after 4 hours and look at how smooth the texture is and very creamy. I did get a compliment that this ice cream tasted better than outside ice cream. So please do try this recipe and make it in the similar manner. Thank you so much for watching. Hare Krishna.